Welcome back to Andrea's Kitchen. Today is Sunday. Yes, I've made another Sunday on my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to prepare the most delicious polori. My children have been asking for polori as a snack for the evening. So I said, okay, I'm going to make some polori for you guys. So I just, I'm going to introduce you to what polori is all about. Polori actually is, is another one of the food that is indigenous to Trinidad again. Um, just like roti. Um, it's made with flour. It's made with um, split peas powder. Some people can purchase the split peas in the pack and make the actual fast styling sort of polori. But I like to make my stuff from scratch, okay? So I'm going to show you how I went about preparing my polori. And I hope you really enjoy making this after you have looked at the video. Um, I've used sifted flour, two and a half cup of plain white sifted flour. What I did with the split peas, this is the actual split peas that I use. I put the split, I boil the split peas until it's not soft, but not too hard, but not too soft. And I placed it in my food processor. And I processed the peas. And this is what the outcome of the processed peas look like. My granules, right? So this is the processed split peas. Right, from here to here. Okay, so um, I have a little bit of stuff that I need to put to my polori to make it real tasty and exotic. So, of course, Shadow and Benny, you must use that, that's a must. I have a Congo pepper, I'm gonna use just a piece of this Congo pepper. I have some cumin. I have a little tip of saffron I'm gonna use. I have grated garlic, baking powder, and salt and oil for frying of course. Um, so let's get started. I also have, I also am going to add yeast. Any type of yeast you can use, okay? But you have to dissolve the yeast in some warm water so it can be more effective in preparation. So um, what I'm gonna do, this is the pot I'm going to use actually, this little tiny baby pot, yes, it's gonna fry some polori. Um, the reason why I have chosen this pot, because it has some depth, okay? In one of my video, um, I think I was making, what was I making? Anyway, I, I use the pot that has depth to fry the food. Okay, when it's fried, deep frying, you need something with depth because it saturates the food whenever it's a flat um, frying pan that you're using. So here we go. So I'm gonna show you how to start the mixing. I'm gonna wash my hands. always emphasize on hand washing it's very very important in hand washing especially if you are going to use your hands to prepare meals okay so we're going to use this mixing bowl the flour is uh, I'm going to use two and a half cups of flour two and a half cups so just help me out here with this so for this recipe some people can use different measurements, but for, for, for this recipe, this is what I'm going to use. Two and a half cups of flour, sifted flour. Sort of get it level off. Two and a half cup. Okay. Okay. To this, I'm going to add one cup of the split peas. One cup of split peas. Okay, folks? Let's put this aside here. All right, here we go. I'm going to use like a quarter teaspoon. Yeah, about a quarter teaspoon of turmeric. I'm going to use about the same thing in salt, for a teaspoon of salt, and also the jira, for a teaspoon of jira. <coughs> garlic, um, two cloves of garlic. This is about two cloves of garlic, so I'm going to use all of this. I love to use garlic in my cooking, so I'm going to use all of the garlic. And the good old shadow benny. Okay, I'm going to use like two leaves of shadow benny that I had crushed. So two leaves of shadow benny. 
Doesn't it look nice, folks? And um, <clears throat> baking powder. Um, actually, I'm going to use one, two, three. Three tablespoons of baking powder. The reason why I put three tablespoons of baking powder, it makes the dough lighter. Okay? Along with the yeast. Um, the yeast... One packet of yeast, I'm going to use like three quarter packet of yeast. And I'm going to dissolve it into some warm water. About three quarter packet. Get some warm water. Dissolve it. Just give it a little stir. Okay. And the pepper. Um... You know what? I'm just going to cut the pepper in little pieces. You can chop it up, but I, I'm just going to cut it, okay? Use my knife and cut it into small pieces. Everything is colorful in all meals in the Caribbean in Trinidad. Everything is colorful and exotic. So, yes, we bring in the colors. Okay? All right. <coughs> okay. So I'm going to add the is mixed here to the dough. It smells good. It smells really good. So um, let me have a drink because I always drink on my show. Try the truth. Wet it a little bit in fact. All right. So I'm going to wash my hands again. So this amount of dough is going to give you an adequate amount of pulau because I'm going to make them kind of small. Okay, here we go. This is the mixing of the batter. My hands are washed, they are thoroughly clean, so you can add some more water. And you take your hand, use it as a fork, and you mix the dough. And you have to make it light. It must not be heavy, it must be light. And then it sort of double up in bulk. Leave it to rest for like um, let's say 15 minutes. I like when you see a beat in it, it sort of swells up like you know it's going to be good. Okay, you can put a little more saffron here, choose a little more saffron for color. Depends on your taste buds. See the garlic is in here, salt, pepper, a little bit of turmeric. Well, enough turmeric to make it yellow, that is. Look at that, you see? See how it falls? This is how it should fall. With this amount, rest for like 15 20 minutes and I'll come back and show you how the dough is fried. The pulao mix here has been resting for like 15 minutes so I just wash my hands and I'm going to do the frying process okay so I have a bowl of water so I can use this and the what happens with the water is when you dip your hand in the pulao mix here okay you first have to wet your hands so that it slides off into the into the frying pot okay see here we go so I'm going to mix, give it a little final mix, add a little water also, mix. Okay, here we go. Let's see what takes place, what magic occurs or what magic does not occur. Oh, it's popping up, beautiful. That's what I like. That's what I love to see. See how much you can fit inside this little pot one time. Occupy all the space you can. I'm making polori like a boss. According to Marshall Montano. 
Don't mind the little spots all over. You can't play master for powder in my kitchen. Okay? See how nice it's flipping over? Beautiful. Really, really beautiful. This is what I like. And um, this is how the pulori should look. It should pop up to the top of the oil and it should move around and make way for the rest of pulori. So this is what's happening in my kitchen and Andrea's kitchen. Nice pulori. It's coming out really beautiful. Okay. I'm going to lower the stove now a little bit. Not too much because you want that right temperature to cook the rest of pulori. Don't mind my hand. You toss it a little bit. Just a little. Gently toss it. It won't be rough because it's hot oil you're dealing with, okay? So it don't stay long when it pops up to the top. It take a couple seconds and then you know it's cooked. Okay, so I'm gonna take this out. And I'm gonna display this glory and I will continue the rest later on. So this is my glory. Okay, folks, are you guys hungry for some polori? This is Andrea's polori, made by yours truly. And to top it off, I have some mango chutney and I have some tamran sauce. Okay, so this looks so good. The polori looks heavenly. The sauce is terrific. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to do the sauce. So I'm going to dip in right now. This is how we do it. You take a polori, you dip it into, into the, um, the mango chutney and you... Mm. Mm. Really good. Into the tamarind sauce. Oh my gosh, it's spiking and nice. Ah! Mm. Mm. This is really good. Okay, folks, you must subscribe to my channel. It's a must. It's mandatory that you subscribe in order to enjoy this nice, well-cooked polori, along with some nice, tasty mango chutney and some tamarind sauce. So until next time, this is Andrea's Kitchen saying bye.